Welcome to my YouTube channel which is titled Research Methods Class with Dr. Lydia Wabugo. In Research Methods, we have a book titled Research Methods, Theory and Practice. This book is accessible through the website where you can access the hard copy of the book or a downloadable PDF format of the book. In the same website, you are able to access all the courses which includes the free research methods course, IBM SPSS statistics course, M&E consultancy course which are available at a fee. Please find the links in the description. Welcome. Welcome to our lesson today where we are going to discuss section 3.8 of chapter 3 of the research proposal. So we are still discussing chapter 3 which is titled research methodology and today we are going to look at data analysis technique which is subsection 3.8. And we will mainly deal with quantitative data in this, in this lesson. And then in our next lesson, we are going to talk about analysis of qualitative data. In our previous lesson, we have discussed section 3.6, which is data collection instruments, and section 3.7, which is on data collection procedure. Remember, we have said 3.6 discusses instruments, not methods. So we talk about data collection instruments. And then this section has got three subsections. It has a 3.61, which is piloting, 3.62, which is validity, and 3.63, which is reliability. You do not have to worry about the being subsections. You only need to fit in the content as per your discipline. So we, today we will concentrate on how to analyze quantitative data in section 3.8 or how to explain how you will analyze quantitative data in section 3.8. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the meaning of data analysis, state the type of types of data analysis and statistical test, identify statistical tools that we use under descriptive and inferential statistics, and then explain what is required of you as a researcher to write under in section 3.8. Remember, we discussed in details data analysis techniques in lesson 46 to lesson 50. So we are still in our chapter 3. So far we have discussed seven subsections. So today we are discussing section 3.8, which we will divide it into two. First is quantitative data, then the second is qualitative. Our previous lesson has talked about data collection instruments. So now you have gone to the field, you have collected data. This data that you collect must be analyzed. It must be presented and interpreted to make it meaningful to the audiences of the research work. When we look at chapter four, we will differentiate between presentation of data, interpretation of data, and discussion of findings. So the process of reducing data to manageable summaries is what is called data analysis. And in most social science uh, uh, projects, dissertations, and theses, data analysis is mainly carried in chapter four. So you have your 100 questionnaires that you have uh, uh, collected data from your sample. So the method or the process that we'll use to make sure that this, these 100 questionnaires have been summarized as per the variable is what is called data analysis. The method of data analysis is determined by the type of data that you collect and the scale of measurement. We have mentioned this in our previous lesson and we discussed scales of measurement in lesson 5 and revision lesson 4. When you collect numerical data, you will definitely use statistics to analyze it. When you collect narrative data, you will use inductive or thematic method to analyze. 
and in both of them we no longer analyze data manually so the common softwares that we use we have SPSS for quantitative data or numerical data and NVivo for narrative data or qualitative data so we are concentrating on quantitative, da uh, quantitative data which is analyzed using statistics so we when we are analyzing quantitative data or numerical data we can either use descriptive statistics which means a way of letting one number stand for a group of numbers or you can use inferential statistics which allows you to make inferences and predictions about the population based on sample data taken from the population in question so descriptive describes the sample descriptive statistics describes a sample but now when you make inferences and predictions about a population based on the sample and so that you are able to generalize your findings to the wider population you use inferential statistics and inferential statistics is based on probability and this inference and the predictions are enabled or made possible because we are able to test hypotheses and all this we discussed in details earlier on so when you are testing hypotheses you use two statistical tests parametric which makes the assumptions that population is drawn from a normally distributed uh, population and they are called parametric because the assumptions are about population parameters and we also have non-parametric tests that are sometimes called assumption free tests because they make fewer assumptions and most of the time they are based on the principle of ranking data meaning analysis is carried out on ranks rather than on actual data so this table summarizes for us the common descriptive statistics and then we'll move to the common inferential statistics. I'm saying common because our earlier lessons looked at the statistical tools in details. So other descriptive statistics, we have three methods of analysis of analyzing data or three methods of presenting data. We have graphical, we have tabular, and we have numerical other graphical bar graphs and pie charts are for categorical data while histograms scatter diagrams and frequency polygons are for continuous data tabular frequency distribution tables and cross tabs are for categorical data other numerical mode is for categorical data whereas mean median and measures of variability that is range variance and standard deviation are for continuous data other inferential statistics we have three methods of analysis we have correlation we have regression and we have tests of comparison correlation we look at spearman rank order which is uh, 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 for categorical we also have chi-square which is also for categorical data specifically nominal whereas spearman is for ordinal then we have pearson product movement correlation coefficient is for continuous data regression we have simple and multiple for continuous do not forget we talked about binary logistic in our earlier uh, uh, lessons and we explained the type of data that you uh, uh, you use to analyze using those statistical tools then with the test of comparison we have t-test and remember we have three types of t-test and we have ANOVA analysis of variance both for continuous data so in section 3.7 the researcher should first identify the statistical tools that the tool that you will use for quantitative data then once you have identified the tool then you should go on explaining to the reader how you will answer the research question and the tools that you will use to test the hypothesis then how do you organize your data as you present remember we always start with 
descriptive statistics and then from descriptives then you go to inferential so that is how the flow should be and under descriptive you start with the tabular then you go to graphical then you go to numerical that would be the best way to organize your data so note that once you have identified the statistical tool you have explained how you will use them to test and answer the research question then the last part is to explain how you will present data starting with descriptive and then inferential and this brings us to the end of our lesson where we have discussed section 3.8 on data analysis technique and we have mainly concentrated on quantitative data analysis the next section we will still discuss data analysis uh, technique but focus on qualitative data so thank you for being part of this class do not forget to subscribe to this channel like and share and put any question that you have on the comment section